Welcome to class 10 in uh, topics in power electronics and distributed generation. In the last class, we were looking at uh, the issues of co fault coordination and we looked at the case where you had an existing feeder and then a uh, distributed generation source was added to the feeder and then we looked at what would what is the resulting uh, system. So, we saw that uh, in general in a distribution system, the fault current levels can actually increase, uh, decrease or stay the same. So, if your fault current level changes during the with the addition of a distributed generator source, then there is a possibility of miscoordination uh, between your upstream and downstream device. Uh, because of this change in the cu current level. And you cannot uniformly say that the current level is always going to increase. At the protection point, it can actually go in, in all three ways. Okay. Uh, so, if you look at then in the case of uh, 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 your uh, parallel connected circuit breakers, suppose you add a, a, a DG source and then you have a parallel uh, branch which is going into a, a neighboring facility and uh, that could be a situation similar to this particular circuit breaker too. We saw that the current that needs to be handled by this parallel breaker can potentially go up. So, in parallel with uh, the DG system there can be numerous breakers because you have many loads, uh, many possible branches that are there in parallel and there is a possibility that the current level may go above the interoperating of that particular parallel breaker, in which case the that particular device need to be replaced with a higher rated uh, device. And then the issue is uh, becomes more complicated because the parallel breaker may not be owned by the person who is introducing the DG and then you have the question of who will uh, bear the upgrade cost. Is it going to be the uh, electricity provider, the utility provider or the person who is installing or who is the owner of this parallel branch protective device. So, there are uh, questions like that which arise. So, uh, you also have the situation where say in a, because of the change in current level, a recloser which might have been uh, 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 say the coordination settings might have been done to obtain few saving strategy and because of the change in uh, uh, the current levels with uh, the addition of DG now the few saving strategy may not work. So, now there is a direct cost impact on the utility because of the addition of the DG source. Uh, also for example, if you have a sectionalizer. Uh, sectionalizer is supposed to operate with a upstream recloser. So, if you look at the previous example, suppose uh, CB1 was a recloser and uh, CB2 was a sectionalizer, then essentially the sectionalizer would open uh, for a case of say fault uh, at bus 4. Suppose you have a fault uh, at bus 4. Then we saw that uh, essentially what the, rec uh, the recloser along with a sectionalizer would do is that uh, uh, the sectionalizer would try to clear a, a temporary fault over here making use of the characteristics of the recloser. But now if you have a parallel DG which is uh, sending current through the recloser, the recloser will now have to in interrupt a non-zero current where it was designed to interrupt a zero current level. Also, if the current that the DG is providing is now higher than the setting for its counting, then the counting of the sectionalizer might uh, get affected. So, there is a possibility that uh, the sectionalizer may uh, uh, maloperate or might operate at uh, non-zero current. So, for a variety of these reasons, you would uh, need to address this particular issue. And uh, one possibility is uh, to, to address the issue of miscoordination between protective devices. Uh, you could think about upgrading your uh, protective devices 
uh, from the simple time over current type of characteristics to something more complex uh, like what is being used in transmission systems or in meshed network where you can have multiple sources and then you try to protect uh, uh, sections of the network by uh, things like uh, directional relays, uh, distance relays, etcetera. So, that would be one possibility, but then that uh, drastically increases the cost which may not be acceptable for a distribution system. Then the, the second uh, another possibility is uh, say uh, to uh, uh, to increase uh, say to operate your distribu uh, distributed generation source. So, that uh, you rapidly disconnect the DG for any fault on the distribution system. So, in this particular example that you have for any fault in any part of this particular system essentially you need to rapidly operate uh, C B 3. So, that you disconnect C B 3 in rapidly in response to a fault then the feeder goes back to the traditional distribution system operation and then the, the previous old setting for coordination would work. Uh, but there is always a, a problem in situations such as this that uh, uh, you uh, have to operate the C B 3 extremely rapidly which means that it is more uh, prone towards uh, opening under nuisance conditions. Uh, it is uh, uh, circuit breakers have finite number of uh, opening and closing before it needs servicing. So, you would need much higher maintenance for the circuit breaker. So, uh, just being able to rapidly open the breaker may not be uh, again sufficient in all uh, situations. Okay. So, another uh, way of uh, addressing this particular situation potentially is uh, uh, instead of having the traditional uh, uh, say voltage behind uh, 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 impedance type of uh, DG, if you can operate your DG such that uh, you, uh, uh, you have it controlled more like a current source, uh, where now your current injection level during fault is almost the load current level, then your contribution of fault current from your DG is now much lesser. This is what is more typical in a power electronic type of DG, uh, where often if you look at existing power electronic systems, you have some disturbance coming from the grid, your power converter might actually just trip off. So, many times the contribution coming from your power converter might be extremely small. Uh, so, if you could have a power electronic DG rather than a machine type of DG, then that might address this issue to uh, some extent. Uh, but again this has a cost impact, I mean the cost of power electronics is higher than cost of machines. So, ideally uh, then the challenge is uh, can you make the cost of a power converter uh, as low as that of a, of a machine. Okay. So, you can see that uh, the variety of challenges uh, in uh, uh, when you connect uh, uh, DG uh, distributed generation source to uh, the distribution system. And there are possible solutions, but uh, it has to be addressed in a, uh, a clean manner. And uh, uh, many of these uh, uh, problems are actually non-technical, like what is, who is the, who is the owner of what particular device, which is not uh, uh, a clear technical problem. So you will have to actually look at it in from multiple factors rather than just a technical way of uh, looking at the electrical system. Now, we will look at any another aspect of uh, distribute, uh, the distribution system an important factor. Uh, again uh, it has implications when uh, DG gets connected and that is uh, grounding. Okay. So, if you have uh, uh, any electrical system uh, you would uh, ground it and the primary objective of grounding of a system is actually uh, human safety. Uh, someone should not touch a electrical system and uh, uh, get a shock, you should not get electrocuted. So, human safety is uh, a very the primary objective. Uh, if you touch a cabinet, you should not get a shock. So, you should have low touch potential and uh, 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 
if you also want to prevent uh, overheating of conductors, uh, after you have a fault you can have over current and if the current level stays high for a longer duration, then the conductors would heat and you can have uh, electrical fires. So, uh, to prevent uh, electrical fires is a important criteria. And to prevent uh, may both the uh, high touch potential lasting for long duration and for ensuring that uh, uh, you do not create overheating, you need to actually rapidly disconnect the fault. So, even for if there is a short over potential for a fault duration, if that duration is very small, then the uh, resulting damage can be uh, quite small. Okay. Also another uh, important objective is uh, uh, say uh, prevention of arcing. When you uh, have a fault, there is always a chance that you might have a vaporization of metal uh, very at very high current levels. You have a lot of energy in the arc and people who might be standing near the arc might get uh, uh, severe burns. Electrical burn is a very severe category of burn and to prevent that you want to actually ensure that uh, the energy in the arc is kept minimal. So, you want to prevent uh, uh, electrical uh, the energy in uh, arc falls. There are uh, other factors that are uh, important uh, for example, uh, rapid identification of the fault and its clearance is an important aspect. Uh, for many equipment uh, ensuring the uh, continuity of electrical service is an important uh, uh, factor. So, if you have a fault in one equipment uh, you and if the equipment is critical and if uh, the equipment goes down there might be uh, consequences of, uh, uh, of uh, shutting down that particular electrical section. So, you might have critical equipment where even after a fault you might need to ensure continuity of service. So, sometimes uh, the, the need for continuity of service might uh, conflict with the need for rapidly uh, uh, clearing the fault after identifying it. So, you need to have a definite strategy of what exactly is more important for uh, the portion of network that uh, is being considered. Also, if you look at uh, equipment during fault, there is a chance that uh, the, the, the phases which are not uh, faulted would potentially experience over voltage and uh, over voltage can cause damage to insulation and you want to ensure that uh, you do not have over voltage because of uh, the way in which you have grounded. Uh, your uh, uh, grounding also has an uh, impact on equalization of voltage between multiple equipment. Suppose you have uh, especially when you are looking at uh, communication, computer networks etcetera, you have equipment in one location trying to communicate to another particular location and you want to ensure, ensure the integrity of signals. So, how you ensure what is reference at the two locations would become an important factor for, uh, for ensuring uh, equalization of voltage and the integrity of communication. Also uh, things like uh, how you ground your cabinet can have an Im impact on EMI, both uh, EMI susceptibility and uh, uh, the emissions can be impacted by the way in which you are grounding. So, overall grounding is an important aspect of uh, any system that you are building or uh, how you operate the system, uh, this is an important factor. So, if you look at uh, the grounding uh, of a distribution system, you can think about uh, uh, what are the possibilities of uh, at the source end. At the source end, you can have an ungrounded system and when you have an ungrounded system, you might have uh, a Y uh, section of a transformer which is uh, with a insulated neutral or you might have a delta uh, connection uh, at your source. So, uh, ungrounded uh, is one possibility. Uh, you can also say have solid grounding essentially it means that uh, you can have a Y transformer with the neutral solidly connected to ground uh, 
can have a zigzag transformer. So, uh, with different possibilities you can have uh, very no intentional impedance added between your neutral and the ground is what is uh, solid grounding uh, is. Okay. Then you have the third option which is uh, impedance grounding and when you connect a impedance between your neutral and ground then the, uh, qu the question is what is the impedance that you are connecting. Uh, there are part two possibilities one is you have a high impedance or you have a low impedance and then uh, there are further two possibilities whether you are connecting a, a resistance or a reactance. So, you can have uh, high resistance grounding, low resistance grounding. So, uh, or you can have uh, high reactance or uh, low reactance grounding. Uh, high reactance grounding is not that common. Uh, uh, there are some special cases uh, where people talk about resonant grounding etcetera, but that is only for special cases where you have a lot of control over the parasitic capacitance to ground. Uh, the common uh, impedance grounding methods are high resistance or uh, low resistance uh, or low reactance. Uh, so, we will look at uh, the a, a, a case of uh, when you have uh, uh, a, a insulated or uh, ungrounded system uh, and we will assume that you have a delta y transformer and the y point is not grounded and say you are feeding uh, two loads load L 1 and L 2 uh, which in turn are connected through delta 1 uh, delta y transformers and say you have uh, transformers uh, x 1 and x 2 x 2 and x 3 and say you have a, a fault to ground occurring on the feeder say with uh, fault impedance Z f and you want to look at uh, uh, what would be the result of uh, uh, such a, a scenario in this particular system and we are looking at a single line to ground fault which is a common uh, type of fault uh, that can occur in the system. Okay. So, to analyze this we will uh, draw the sequence network to analyze this particular fault. So, uh, you have your positive sequence network. So, in this particular case we had assumed that we have a transformer with 5 percent uh, reactance and the zero sequence network is actually now a open circuit because your uh, it is ungrounded okay so your So, if you look at uh, the there can be no fault current in this I f should be 0 in this particular case. So, you have V plus is equal to 1 per unit and V minus is 0 and V 0 is y minus V plus uh, minus 1. So, then if you look at your phase voltages uh, using uh, the sequence transform, uh, 
So, your V A is 0 which is what you would expect because uh, that is the phase that has the fault V B is root 3 angle So, you can see that uh, phase B and C uh, uh, conductors see line to line voltage on a uh, with respect to ground and but if you look at the the loads uh, loads L 1 and L 2 the loads L 1 and L 2 would not see any disturbance because it is connected through transformers and the transformers block the 0 sequence voltage. So, the loads do not see any disturbance. Uh, but the feeder would see uh, 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 some the phase B and C would see uh, increased voltage voltages okay. And the amount of fault current is actually 0 which, which means that uh, uh, it can actually continue to operate uh, under that condition for actually a long duration of time okay. The main concern of uh, this particular uh, situation is that uh, the phase which is uh, 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 which has the fault would typically have some level degree of arcing which means that uh, whatever conductor uh, uh, got grounded would have arcs and that arc would periodically act like a switch which uh, is on or off depending on whether there is uh, the nature of the arcing and uh, your uh, parasitic capacitances in your feeder along with your physical inductances of your circuit components would potentially have uh, resonant oscillations where uh, with a fairly high Q factor uh, because the, there are no loads that are now directly seen uh, for this particular uh, uh, 0 sequence voltage. And then essentially you would have higher phase voltage which can potentially now be much higher than uh, the root 3 times uh, the voltage that we saw and you can uh, uh, damage insulation. So, people almost never use uh, uh, ungrounded uh, systems. Uh, what would be more common is to use a, a high resistance grounded grounding system where the resistance would uh, help dampen out the oscillations and uh, provide the required damping. And uh, uh, also one need to uh, keep in mind the type of uh, uh, over voltage protective devices that are used in the system. Suppose you have uh, surge arresters which are rated for uh, line to neutral uh, uh, line to ground voltage of uh, some with some particular margin. Now, if it is seeing uh, 1.7 times the nom nominal voltage. Uh, then you need to actually on a longer term basis you need to ensure that your over voltage protective devices are rated for the appropriate uh, level of voltage. Okay. The second thing to consider is uh, if you have one fault say occurring on phase A and now you have a second fault now occurring on phase B or phase C or maybe even at a neutral then the resulting fault would be now uh, uh, having much higher fault current levels uh, because it acts like a phase to phase fault and then the, the over current would immediately trip the, the breaker. Uh, and you do not want to ensure that you want to ensure that uh, the fault which has occurred first is attended to at some particular point before the a second fault occurs in such a system. Okay. So, you would like to have uh, some sort of a monitoring system which uh, monitors the voltage and uh, ensure that uh, there is a, a good availability of uh, 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 I mean one of the attractive features of this particular case system was that even after the first fault uh, you had a continuity of service to load 1 and load 2. So, with uh, high impedance uh, grounding uh, people try to make use of the ability for the system uh, 
to be uh, uh, both available after the first fault, but at the same time you need to have uh, insulation monitoring and uh, residual current measurements etcetera to ensure that uh, uh, some maintenance is being done. So, that before the second fault occurs the first uh, fault is identified and cleared. Okay. If you look at uh, the, the, uh, the grounding of a typical system one should also not just look at the grounding of the source alone you have to look at uh, both uh, grounding at the source and at the load. Uh, this is uh, important because if you look at uh, a physical uh, distribution system uh, there is a, 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 a geographically the source might be a, a, dis, a distribution transformer at the end of the street and your loads may be your individual houses all along the street. So, there is a big separation between where the load is and where the source is and uh, uh, unlike say if you have a printed circuit board your power supply and your, uh, your load on that particular printed circuit board is on the same board and geographically much closer together in uh, distribution system the distance between your source and the load is actually much larger. So, you have to think in terms of both uh, grounding at the source and grounding at the load. Okay. So, based on the grounding at the source of the load uh, some of the common uh, uh, ways of uh, nomenclature or uh, configurations for the grounding system. Uh, one is a IT system where the first word I refers, refers to insulated and the word T refers to terra. So, your source is uh, high resistance grounded or the neutral is insulated from ground and uh, the load frame is connected to earth or terra. Okay. So, that is one possibility. Another possibility is the source uh, uh, is connected to terra through no intentional impedance and uh, the, the, the earthing from the source is uh, now your neutral point is distributed to the load and this is this configuration is called a T n configuration. Okay. Also you could have power earths uh, earthing points both at the source and at the load this is called a uh, T t configuration where both the source and the load is connected to terra. Okay. So, th and these are important especially considering the secondary distribution network. Uh, so, this is the low voltage network which comes from your distribution transformer which might be 11 kV to uh, 415 volts and then coming to the individual homes or establishments. And an example uh, of uh, ungrounded uh, uh, secondary distribution network uh, is a IT network where you can see that the neutral is insulated from the ground and the loads have their own local grounds. So, you can have uh, say uh, power earth for say load 1 and 2 might share a power earth, load 3 might have its own power earth at a different location. So, these are essentially uh, grounding rods that are, connect, uh, that are connected to the ground. So, essentially load 1's cabinet is uh, connected to power earth load 2's cabinet is connected again to power earth, uh, load 3 cabinet is connected to its power earth. Uh, there are 3 wires plus the neutral from your transformer going to the load. So, your loads may be 3 phase or single phase. Okay. So, in this particular situation this uh, corresponds to the situation where uh, if you have a fault uh, say on uh, line to ground basis, then uh, you can potentially uh, continue to operate the loads uh, as we saw in the in the ungrounded uh, system. Uh, but say suppose uh, instead of the the fault occurring at this particular point, you could also have a situation where say the fault occurs say in load one. Uh, 
and in which case you need to ensure that uh, the load 1 uh, is uh, disconnected, uh, load 1 is disconnected before uh, because there may potentially be a second ground fault may be at some other point in the system. Now, if you want to disconnect load 1 uh, because there is no high current after the first ground fault, you need to ensure that uh, you need uh, ground fault detection capability at each uh, particular load. And not just that, your uh, circuit breaker uh, should now have the capability to disconnect uh, all four conductors. So, it is not a just three, uh, three pole circuit breaker, it is a four pole uh, type of circuit breaker because even if you disconnect say the three uh, phases R y and B for load 1 and say you have a fault in the load where uh, phase R is connected to the, the cabinet in load 1. Suppose you now have a subsequent fault in load 2 that particular fault can actually propagate through the neutral in through load 1. So, to ensure that the load 1 is fully disconnected you have to actually also disconnect the neutral. Okay. So, the type of circuit breaker that you would use in an IT network would be different from what you would use in a, a, a some other type of uh, uh, grounding network. Okay. So, th uh, the next possibility is uh, say uh, uh, instead of having an insulated uh, uh, or a ungrounded source, you could actually have a solidly grounded source. Okay. So, this is an example where you have uh, 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 a delta y transformer which is acting which where the y is now your source and uh, the, the neutral is now connected to ground through no intentional impedance. And for our analysis, we will assume that uh, the source uh, side uh, impedance is 0 and whatever is limiting the current is essentially the transformers uh, leakage. And suppose you have a fault between uh, any any phase to ground uh, will assume say a phase to ground uh, solid fault then essentially in this particular case we can then look at what is the resulting uh, 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 voltages and currents So, we will assume a, a source through a circuit breaker So, your sequence network is essentially So, your I f by 3 So, your fault current level for a single line to ground fault is uh, 20 per unit. In this particular case uh, we have assumed that your uh, your source impedance is zero in which case your uh, 
three phase fault current and your single line to ground fault current is actually going to be the same. If your source impedance is not 0, if uh, then your single line to ground fault current level with a, a delta y uh, transformer with the y which is solidly grounded, the single line to ground fault current can actually be higher than the three phase fault current uh, because uh, the 0 sequence impedance back at the source uh, is not captured in the 0 sequence uh, uh, network. So, sometimes uh, people might consider adding uh, a neutral grounding impedance for the transformer even in this particular case. Okay. Uh, but to look at the analysis of this particular uh, situation, we can then look at what is the resulting voltage your V plus. So, your V plus turns out to be 0 0.67 uh, uh, angle 0, your your V minus So, uh, we can calculate our phase voltages. So, we can see that uh, the in this particular case when, when you have uh, solid grounding your phase uh, B and C does not see uh, uh, over voltage. But you can see that your uh, fault current level is quite large. And in our example, it is uh, 20 per unit uh, can uh, cause arcing faults. Okay. Uh, however, you can see that even though the fault current is uh, quite large, uh, the current level is large implies that uh, your circuit breakers would act on an instantaneous basis. So, the duration of fault current would uh, be uh, shorter. So, uh, so your fault is cleared on a short time. So, the 
thermal damage may not be that bad, but uh, you can have arcing for your uh, short duration when uh, there is a high current flowing when there is a single line to ground fault. Okay. So, if you look at uh, then uh, uh, an example system where you have a, a solid li line to ground, uh, 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 I mean solid uh, uh, grounding of the source. Uh, an example is the TN, net, TN network where the Y point of your uh, transformer is uh, solidly connected to power earth and the neutral is then distributed to all the loads. And uh, so, the neutral is now expected to be at uh, uh, low voltage at the ground voltage because it is uh, connected in a tight manner to power earth. Uh, so, uh, your loads uh, load 1 and load 2 cabinet is also now connected to the uh, uh, distributed neutral. Uh, so, you have a situation where uh, uh, you can say for example, you might have a fault in load 1 and uh, you now have a large current flowing between your phase conductor and returning back to the source through this uh, neutral wire uh, and the current level is quite high. Uh, and uh, one thing is it is it, it can be quite difficult to uh, distinguish between now uh, unbalanced uh, load current flowing through the neutral and a uh, ground fault uh, current which is now uh, coming through the neutral because a ground co uh, ground conductor is being shared okay Also, if you look at the network, uh, suppose you have uh, a considerable uh, uh, say distance between your source and your load, then uh, your uh, impedance of the neutral conductor might be uh, uh, not negligible, which means that if you have a high current which is now flowing through this particular neutral conductor, then a person who is actually uh, having his uh, hand on uh, say uh, uh, a cabinet will see a uh, high touch potential because uh, uh, and the touch potential is now seen across the uh, across the network, but it is uh, typically for a short duration because uh, we saw that the the current level is quite large which means that your instantaneous strips would operate. So, for a short duration you could have elevated uh, touch potentials. So, one issue was this uh, neutral current is not being differentiated from your uh, load current. So, one way of getting around uh, that particular problem is to have uh, something called the TNS grounding where the neutral and the power earth are now separated as conductors. So, your unbalanced uh, load currents will flow through your neutral conductor and only your your fault current will flow through your uh, ground conductor. Okay. So, so this is a TN with separate uh, ground and neutral conductors. Uh, here it is now possible to uh, differentiate between uh, 
a case of unbalance and uh, uh, ground current. Uh, but uh, here again you can see that immediately the, the cost is high uh, for uh, distributing a uh, power in three phase. Now, you have five conductors. right? So, then uh, you can say okay, maybe you can have uh, some combination of this where maybe for some distance you will have a common uh, uh, say a conductor and further further behind it you can have separate conductors uh, for your network. So, you might have some uh, this is called a TNCS network where there is T n combined for some section and then separate for the rest of the section. So, as long as the fault current is being monitored uh, uh, say at different locations where you have the separation then it is possible to look at the, uh, the sum of the currents in your uh, phases and along with your neutral to identify there is whether there is a ground fault. But then you do not have to distribute your your new uh, your ground conductor your five conductors all the all the way it is uh, combined to some extent and then it is separated okay in this particular case unlike the case where we saw in the it type of distribution networks it is now sufficient to have your circuit breakers on a, a three pole basis because uh, 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 of your solid grounding uh, each phase any of the phase which would have a ground fault would see the elevated uh, uh, current and then it would get disconnected from the uh, from the source and your neutral anyway is solidly connected to ground. So, a three pole uh, circuit breaker would be sufficient in a, a T n type of network uh, unlike the I T type of network. So, so, next the uh, next possibility of uh, having a, a, ground, a grounding in your network is to have a impedance between your neutral and ground. So, you intentionally add a, a, a resistance or a, a reactance uh, to the particular network and uh, and then we will look at the resulting situation what would happen in this particular case. Uh, so, in this particular example we will look at a, a case where you are acti adding a reactance of uh, J.1 J.1 per unit. So, the reactance is uh, quite small. So, this is a uh, low reactance uh, type of grounding which means that the ground current in this particular case uh, is high. Uh, you might select the reactance that it is high just high enough to trigger your instantaneous protections, but it is not too high that uh, you might have severe arcing damage. So, you get the advantage of uh, the high currents at allowing your uh, device protective devices to trip rapidly, but at the same time the currents not becoming so large that you would have uh, dangerous arcing at the point of fault. So, your fault damage can be reduced in this particular case. So, if you look at the, the resulting uh, sequence network. So, we look at uh, impedance grounding. And we look at an example. Of uh, uh, J point 0.1 per unit as uh, we mentioned. So, if we look at what would be the resulting sequence network uh, when there is a fault. So, the positive sequence network is uh, 
this is the negative sequence network. and we will assume Z f to be 0 and the current here is I f by 3. So, you can see that uh, your fault current level has come down when we had solid grounding it was uh, 20 per unit now I f is uh, 6.6 .6 per unit and then we can look at the resulting voltage your V plus and then you could calculate what your phase voltages are. And that works out to be nearly 0, V B is works out to be about 1.45 per unit at angle minus one, 143 degrees. V c is So, you can see that the resulting voltage levels uh, is uh, somewhere in between what you would get in a solid ground situ grounded situation and a ungrounded system. So, in an ungrounded system you, are, you have 1.7 per unit voltage here in a, uh, in, a, in a solid grounded case you have 1 per unit here you have 1 point uh, about 1.5 per unit as your voltage uh, that is seen on a phase to ground basis and if you look at uh, your fault current level And if you look at your fault current level, so your peak fault current level is reduced. Uh, so, uh, so we'll uh, we'll we we see that uh, you can have uh, advantages of uh, the of the two cases when you are now connecting a, a impedance to your neutral. Uh, again depending on uh, what is the particular uh, way your application uh, 
you might have different ways of uh, connecting your grounds and we will continue with this discussion of uh, grounding in the next class. Uh, but you can see that uh, this is an important uh, aspect of uh, any system design or even equipment design to ensure that uh, whatever you are designing is actually safe and can be used in a manner which would uh, not uh, cause any uh, danger to the potential user of the equipment. Okay. Thank you.